Live from Studio A on the Ohlone Fremont campus, this is Ohlone Tri-City News, featuring stories about our neighbors in Fremont, Newark, and Union City. Good evening and welcome to Ohlone Tri-City News for Wednesday, October 5th, 2022. I am Rebecca Twyman and now the news. The Fear Overload Scream Park is back in the Bay Area as the Bay's scariest haunted house event. There are two new attractions this year, Blind Asylum and Undead Underpass. In the Blind Asylum, you wake up in a hospital ward and wonder where you are. The Undead Underpass takes you to hell through the mouth of a monster. There's also a glow stick fright night where you and your friends go through an unlit haunted house with a single glow stick. The event is at New Park Mall in Newark starting October 7th from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. People can buy tickets at fearoverload.com. Wednesday, the Ohlone College Foundation and Tri-Cities Career Center held the 2022 Fall Semester Career Fair. The fair featured job opportunities with many businesses and organizations from throughout the Bay Area. They included UPS, KQED, Oakland Unified School District, and the San Jose Sharks, among many more. Police departments from Fremont, Milpitas, and a few other cities were also present at the event. The career fair allowed companies and organizations to increase their branding at Ohlone College and beyond. The Ohlone Engineering Department is training students and factory workers to enter the world of smart manufacturing. Here's Calpana with the story. The fourth industrial revolution is replacing human workers with robots that can repeat the same assembly step perfectly every time. This is the factory work of the future. Um, the re main reason why is because if you look at most um, factory work these days, they're done by robots. More, more and more robots are slowly taking up the simple, very simple tasks and jobs, and these robots are getting more and more smarter. Smart manufacturing uses robots to assemble and make parts automatically. It uses sensors to document and measure each step of the process. Information is used to improve the manufacturing process and the product. It's as smart so because you have much more information to look at whatever it is you're manufacturing. Your devices can therefore make smarter decisions based on the information you have available. With Whereas before it was just either pass or fail. Ohlone is the only community college in the San Francisco Bay Area that has a program to train technicians for smart manufacturing jobs, the jobs of the future. We need people to learn how to program them, operate them, maintain them, and also optimize them to their best usage because these are uh, workhorse machines and we definitely need people around to operate and maintain them. If robots take over manufacturing jobs, what will happen to the humans who used to do those jobs? That is a big topic of debate, whether these jobs that we are creating, are they compensating for what is being taken away? Information, but it is obvious and the robots are taking over more jobs than they are producing. Ohlone offers two routes to smart manufacturing jobs. You can take courses and get technician certificate or you can get an AA degree. The starting salary for a technician is 50 to 70. If you continue to obtain an engineering degree, they can make six figures. This is Kalpana Pachipala for Ohlone Tri-City News. KOHL has been a popular radio station for many years. What's happened to it now? It's coming up after this break. My biggest fear in the middle of my addiction was that I would never be able to get over it and that my kids wouldn't have a father. I started thinking, you know what? This isn't my story. For the longest time, fear held me back from ultimately being who I wanted to. I had to become a better man to be a better father. It's important to me that my kids are empowered and truly believe that if, if they can think it, they can do it. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. 
Fremont Police Department is hosting their public safety fair this Saturday, October 8th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. The free event aims to inform the community about public safety, traffic safety, and crime prevention. There will be exhibits from the Fremont Police Department, BART Police, California Highway Patrol, and many other public services. Fremont Police Department is also showing off their equipment, showcasing their police cars and even a SWAT vehicle. At the event, you can attend a Q&A with the Fremont Police Chief, enter several free giveaways, and even dunk a police officer at the dunk tank. Bring your kids to attend the bike rodeo provided by Safe Moves, which allows kids to practice safe bicycling and scooter riding, and gives a safe space to learn about traffic signals and road safety procedures. The free event will be located at the large parking lot just west of the police campus. Disability Resource Group. Disability Resource Festival, Saturday, September 24th at Fremont Downtown Event Center. The free event included information booths staffed by experts and community partners serving the disabled. Speakers included Fremont Mayor Lily May. The Fremont Police and Fire Departments put on demonstrations and had vehicles on display for families to explore. The festival was held in memory of Feta Amaliti and her son Mu, both of whom died in a home fire on September 26, 2020. The goal of the event was to build positive relationships between first responders and people with disabilities. KOHL has been a popular radio station for many years. What's happened to it now? Here's Sean with the story. Ohlone College's radio broadcasting department used to be a booming department on campus for students to experience real, on-air radio broadcasting. However, this semester, the radio department is empty, and some students are curious as to why that is. I took BRDC 123A. Um, I'm not too sure what the name is specifically. I'm pretty sure it's like the beginning uh, radio operations class. I took radio broadcasting one. What I really enjoyed actually was getting to go inside here and um, that was like our lab time where we would practice going on air, um, you know, introducing music, listening back to the music, uh, reading some scripts. Specifically, I learned all the terminology for each of the equipment that we used in the department. Although these students may have been inexperienced in radio before taking these courses, they seem to have positive opinions on the courses they enrolled in. I enjoyed every bit of the time I had at the radio broadcasting class. Um, it definitely opened my eyes to um, the opportunities that they offer there. It was actually really fun. Um, I enrolled for the next class, the 123B class for this semester, this fall semester, but unfortunately they canceled it, which actually really bummed me out because I was excited to rejoin the class. Pre-COVID, the radio department offered upwards of eight to 12 courses according to Ohlone College's catalog. Today, the number of courses has fallen to zero. Because of low enrollment, we didn't have the minimum number of students for the class to continue the semester. We would need 10 minimum. The radio program still operates their very own 89.3 KOHL FM radio station where you can listen to today's most popular music hits. Although the courses were canceled due to low enrollment this semester, there are still many students who look forward to taking these courses. Taking this course, I definitely would love to start my profession in radio broadcasting um, after, you know, getting my degree. Um, I definitely would enjoy a profession in that. If that 123, you know, the next class comes about again, I definitely will try to enroll and hopefully I can stay in that class and it won't get canceled. Although radio may be a less sought after career in recent years with the incline of new types of media and therefore leading to a low enrollment in radio courses on campus, we hope the students who do want to take these courses can do so soon. From the Ohlone College campus, this is Sean Sakig for the Ohlone Tri-City News. Let's take a look at this week's entertainment with Brandon. Thanks, Rebecca. Under Galactic Cadets premiered on Netflix last Friday, Kid Cootie, who created the film as a companion to his album of the same name, dedicated the film to his deceased friend Virgil Abloh. The film currently sits at 93% on both the audience score and tomato meter on Rotten Tomatoes. The official trailer for the Black Panther sequel, Wakanda Forever, premiered on Monday. At the end of Monday, the trailer sent over 9 million views. The movie takes place after the death of actor Chadwick Bose and incorporates the death of his character into the film. New additions to the cast include Dominic Thorne's Riri Williams and Tenor Huerta's Namor. The trailer was trending at number two on YouTube directly under the video of the face reveal for the popular speedrunner Dream, who was found to be cheating in 2021. 
The YouTuber, who has been mocked widely online for his appearance, used an avatar with a mask to conceal his identity prior to the reveal. On Broadway, Come From Away had its last show on Sunday, and the Broadway revival of Into the Woods released its cast album on Friday. It recently extended its run into January of 2023. The cast features Sarah Barry Alice, Gavin Creel, and Brian Darcy James. That's it for entertainment. Back to you, Rebecca. Quite an exciting week. You know, Into the Woods was one of my favorite musicals. Here at Ohlone, Robin Thomas will be holding a webinar about the importance of gun violence and how we can solve it this week, October 6th, 1 to 2.30. Robin will also be accompanied by special guests that are also influencers against gun violence. By doing so, this will help increase awareness of this controversial topic. If you want to be part of the movement, the Lighten Center for History and the Public Good is the spot to go to. After a two-year hiatus, an event that's been taking place since 1950s has finally returned. Stay tuned, it's coming up after the break. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzz warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Ohlone College's Newark campus plans to have an on-campus housing by 2025. As of right now, the design process is still in progress. However, construction is expected to begin sometime next year in 2023. About 15 acres of land across from the currently active campus will be used, offering over 500 Ohlone students dorm access. Ohlone hopes to make these dorms as affordable as possible for its students as the Bay Area housing market increases year by year. You can find out more by going to www.ohlone.edu slash affordable student housing. Let's take a look at this week's sports with Johan. Thanks, Rebecca. The Ohlone women's volleyball team has had a tough start to the season, to say the least, but after winning two in a row against Los Mendados and Skyline College, blowing both of them out three sets to none, that momentum did not last, unfortunately. The team had a doubleheader against Shasta and Folsom Lake College last Saturday and dropped both games, losing by three sets to none. Their Renegades record is now 4-13 and and will face off against Hartnell College later today to get back into the win column. The Ohlone men's water polo faced off against American River College last weekend. The Renegades came off victorious with the score of 17-4. Alex Brzezinski went off, scoring seven goals unassisted, and the 1-1 one one Renegades will match up against Cobrillo College on the 12th, looking to start a winning streak. Now onto the women's side of water polo. The Renegades took the W last week against De Anza College with a score of 10-5. Gracie Hunt led the Renegades, scoring four goals and... Mary Teodiso scoring four, as well with three goals scored. As they start the season strong, the Renegades will look to build on last week's win as they take on Diablo Valley earlier today. Head coach Mitchell Yuana meeting with his players going over the game plan, but unfortunately the Renegades took the defeat as their record falls to one and two. The Renegades will match up against Murray College on the 12th of this month. The Ohlone men's soccer team faced off against the Monterey Peninsula Lobos yesterday and resulted in a tie 1-1. Midfielder Giovanni Gutierrez scored the lone goal for the Renegades in the 61st minute and goalkeeper Diego Rojas had had five blocks shot on goals. The Renegades overall record is now two wins, seven losses, and two ties. The Renegades will look, get, will look to get back into the win column against the Evergreen Hawks this Friday. And that's it for sports this week. Back to you, Rebecca. Looks like things are starting to look up for Ohlone. 
In celebration of Latinx Heritage Month, tomorrow the program Mecca and the Multicultural Student Center are hosting Latinx Movie Night. This is your time to catch the film in the Time of Butterflies. It will be playing tomorrow, October 6, 3 to 5 p.m. at the local Multicultural Student Center at Ohlone College Fremont Campus, building 4, room 41404. All students are welcome and it's completely free. While food booths, carnival rides, and games, and dozens of arts, crafts, and other vendors prepared for visits, hundreds of people gathered to watch the first in-person parade in two years that celebrates Newark Days, an annual event that commemorates the birthday of the city that was founded in 1955. Parts of Cedar and Newark Boulevards were shut down the morning of Saturday, September 17th, so dignitaries, community groups, performers, and floats could journey along the parade route. The annual event has grown to a four-day celebration that features a show and many other family-oriented activities. The celebration is organized every year by the Newark Day Celebration, uh, um, celebration Inc. nonprofit. For more information, visit their website at newarkdays.org. That's all for Ohlone Tri-City News. Thank you from all of us here in the studio.